Pope Francis this morning at the Vatican getting ready to mark the first anniversary of his papacy. This week, he's been called a Catholic rock star, pumping new life into the church right when it seemed to need it most. So what's next? The roundtable weighs in after ABC's David Wright. At the start of Lent last year, Jorge Mario Bergoglio was just a face in the crowd. Today, Pope Francis is the most talked about person on the World Wide Web, almost single-handedly redefining the Catholic brand. I think he's done a lot to shake up things. Seems to be very popular, and I like him. According to a new Pew poll, 85% of Catholics view him favorably. 71% see major change. He's kind of a rock star, Time's Person of the Year, the cover of Rolling Stone. Now there's even a Francis fanzine. He's become a celebrity, and he's clearly uncomfortable with that to some degree. This week, Francis told an Italian newspaper he's neither a star nor a superman. The Pope, he said, is a man who laughs, cries, sleeps soundly, and has friends, just like everyone else. A normal person. Of course, that humility is partly what people respond to. His modest apartment, his old jalopy, and his message to church officials who've been steeped in luxury. Live simply. Do for others. Champion the poor. He's not asking us to, to change the, the teachings of our church, but he is saying, let's not get so pigeonholed. He's kept the hard line on contraception and abortion, but asked about gay priests, he famously said, who am I to judge? The church still vehemently opposes gay marriage, but just this week, Francis signaled an openness to the idea of civil unions. I'm a gay man, so I feel I never felt like I had a spiritual home in my growing up, right. so I feel very welcome here. But plenty of other constituencies remain skeptical. This week, survivors of priestly sexual abuse were outraged by his remark that the church is unfairly under attack. Many women, too, are eager to see major reforms. The big change I'm looking for from this pope is how he puts his words into actions. According to the Pew poll, the Francis effect hasn't yet translated into higher attendance in church, but it's early days. His first time as pope leading this season of sacrifice. For many, a welcome change. For this week, David Wright, ABC News, Los Angeles. Thanks, David. And now back with the roundtable, the perfect roundtable for this subject, since all of our panelists are Catholic. I want to look down at a few other numbers from this Pew poll. Pope Francis, 84 percent favorable Twitter mentions. It was 30 percent for Benedict. Forty percent of Catholics are praying more. Sixty-eight percent say he's making a major change for the better in the church. Politicians would kill for those numbers. <laughs> Why the excitement? He's the most successful non-political politician that there is in the world. That excitement is because he has brought a fresh air to the Catholic Church. And I think people like me, who were disengaged, disenfranchised, and felt very disappointed with the hierarchy and the structures of the Church, though we still believed in God, now have a voice that is drawing us back. Because mm. he... But what gave you that voice? What voice? Why is it so different? Frankly, that he's focusing on the people. He's focusing on what the church should focus on, serving the poor, serving the needy, that he's being inclusive, not exclusive. He's not being judgmental. He's just asking people to be part of the church family and that he's leading by example. He's talking about income inequality, yes, but he's also gotten rid of the throne and gotten rid of the Prada slippers and lives in, in humility. So he talks the talk, he walks the walk, and you know what else? He likes people. I think that's making mm. a huge difference. Mm. I would also say that, you know, mm. him being his, uh, Latino and Hispanic and, that, that and, yeah. and having, yeah. having yeah, somebody yeah, 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 yeah. is pretty yeah. good. But, but Peggy, is this, yeah. is this just rhetoric, some of it? Or is there really going to be a change? Do you see oh, a future of change? I this see line, a, a change in the tone and, and feel of things. I think Francis's two predecessors, John Paul and Benedict, felt because of the pressures of various emerging questions that they had to stand as the church in contradiction to modernity and the modern world. They did that. This pope says, no, 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 I don't stand in, in contradiction to we embrace. This pope, it seems to me, is back. The greatest teaching of Jesus Christ was the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor. That's where the pope 
puts his embrace in the poor in many ways, the lonely, the imprisoned. When you are going like this at the world, the world can spoof you. When you are embracing the world, the world loves it. That is part of what is going on here. It's very powerful, and I think it's very real. Congressman Castro, if could his rhetoric about unbridled capitalism, social inequality, ever really have actual influence on policy? Oh, I think so. You know, I think that he has been a voice for unity, of compassion, of service, of paying attention to the most vulnerable in society. And that strikes a chord with millions and millions of American Catholics. Uh, so I think he's been a very good voice. Um, mm. And it's spilled over into politics. And a it voice for light. That's what I was going to ask you about, yeah. about it spilling over into politics. It has spilled over into politics. I mean, his name is mentioned again and again mm. in policy debates. Paul Ryan has said he's breathed new life in the debate against poverty. But um, I'm not sure with this Pew poll, um, it says it hasn't brought all that many more people um, um, into the pews. I've seen a different thing here in Washington. I go to different uh, masses around town sometimes. I think it has among young people. Yes. I see younger people in the pews. Yes. And that is something that I haven't seen for a long time. So I think yeah. those five okay, words are you all going yeah. to yeah. 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 are important. I, you know, I, I you talk don't to have priests to your hand. and uh, I talk to priests in Florida and they tell me the same thing, it's, that he has brought more people to church, but just the overall enthusiasm, even amongst non-Catholics in the world, for the church. But, has but the grown. polling says it, it really isn't making a difference with people. All our, all our anecdotal evidence aside, that it's not really bringing people out to church. It's just sort of the feeling. I, I, you know, I think it's, it's making a difference with people yeah. on the inside. I think it's making a difference with how people feel about their relationship with the church and with this pope because he's just so accessible. He's such a yeah. normal guy. You feel like, you know, yeah. any moment you're going to pick up his line and he's going to be on he the other line. He has removed some of the stigmas yes. that the church was carrying with it, which has allowed young people to give it a look and people who had never looked at it with anything but disregard there being able to give it a look. So that's a good thing. And he's right. in your one. Thanks to you all. Thanks to you all. And go to church. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back after this. Catch this week online, all week, at abcnews.com, on Facebook, and Twitter. Now we honor our fellow Americans who serve and sacrifice. This week, the Pentagon released the name of one Marine killed in Afghanistan. That's all for us today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. And before we go, a special word about the executive at the helm of this program, Washington Bureau Chief Robin Sproul. She's being honored this week with a First Amendment Service Award from the Radio Television Digital News Association. I'll be there to introduce her for this well-deserved salute. Congratulations, Robin. Don't forget World News with David Muir tonight, and have a great day.